All right, I think we are recording. Welcome back to the Smokescreen Podcast, episode 12, I believe. 12, yeah, you just uh, educated yeah, me. Yeah, uh, t- technically we did a impromptu phase four MCU thing the other week with Dustin impromptu. But anyway, James and I were talking about originally doing something on cults a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And this is not going to be about cults, but it fits into this realm. This is a fascinating fucking story here that we stumbled upon somehow again without talking to each other um, initially, right? Right. It was really crazy. Because I te- sent you a text and said, hey, have you seen this story on Elizabeth Holmes? And you were like, oh, shit, yeah, I just watched that documentary. I said, yeah, I'm watching it right ago. now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is an, a little bit older story, but it's, it's still recent because uh, this year – she or she's been in court this year and she'll go back to court. So what what we're talking about if you're not familiar for I guess an overview. And it's not just about the story itself. It's it's just how this happens to people. Um like I guess the bottom line is if if you have a good story you can sell anything, <laughs> you know. Right. But I guess we'll we'll give a quick overview of the whole doc, we'll talk about this documentary and the overview of this whole story. Essentially this lady Elizabeth Holmes um Founded a company called Theranos, correct? And that's yes. based off uh, therapy or something and diagnosis, I yep. believe, or something like that. Therapy and diagnosis. And uh, I believe this is in 2012 or something like that. So it's been a while since you since all this happened, um, but it was in 2016 this all fell apart, essentially. Or 2018, actually, um, was kind of the final nail in the coffin. Yeah. So she has this idea right um to improve the way blood is drawn in the medical field and and it's it sounds revolutionary as in in the sense of you know when you go get blood tests you know you get a bunch of vials drawn from your arm intravenously and it takes you know a couple of days to be sent off to a lab somewhere and they call you with the results whatever but you have to order through a doctor like a prescription and this was the idea was a basic sounds like a good idea that you can get all these blood tests done. I think they claimed over 200 and something at the time from a couple of drops of blood, from a finger prick. You yes. Know, was the basic idea. Mm-hmm. So she drops out of school at 19 years old out of Stanford. Yeah. And founds this company, Theranos, and essentially sells this idea to a lot of really powerful people. Yeah. Yeah, she sold them on her vision. On the on the vision. And the vision was to make blood testing more accessible and affordable. Right. So we wouldn't have to say goodbye too soon. Yes, that was her repeat line that she used in every interview we've seen now of, of her. Uh, yeah. Selling this to... Because she'll tell this like, little sad story about how when she was little, she used to go do all these things, fishing and whatnot, with her uncle. Right. And then her uncle just passed away really quickly but in her mind if it was detected earlier he could have been saved so this goes into the whole preventative medicine which is really good stuff when you you know so the idea it does sound good because you could yeah you know under the the, this premise you could go to a walgreens for example we'll talk about that shortly and order your own blood test any Mm -hmm. type you want and pick from this a la carte menu for very cheap apparently compared to regular you know lab testing yeah and then you could, you know, potentially catch stuff very early that's when it's still treatable. You know, any anything from herpes to cancer. It, I mean, the whole spectrum. One one cool thing in the documentary was uh, she was saying, you know, you get your blood work done, you know, at best once a year. Yes. All right. This, if you did it once a month, instead of having a snapshot of your blood at a certain time, you almost have these frames of a movie. Yes, that's the good way to put it. And it helps you predict. You can see patterns developing right. and you things can see changing. If, for example, blood sugars getting a little bit higher every month or something going right. on. You can then go to the doctor and have the right treatment or in, change your diet or whatever it takes. In to theory, disease. it's great. It is. I mean, it's, it's like uh, the utopia on paper. Yeah. Um, so I didn't think I, because I was looking for documentaries. How I came across this was I was just looking for documentaries as usual. And uh, I, I'd seen this documentary, but I thought, eh, you know, I would kind of seen the synopsis, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'll be interested in it. Same, um, same here. And then again, just was it last night or night before, whatever it was, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. I mean, it sounds intriguing, you know, but uh, I don't, I probably won't like it. So if I, I'll give it 20 or 30 minutes or something, and then I'll watch something else. 
I was just, I'm just intrigued by this story. This fascinates me, this whole thing. So I just got into it going, I found myself, you know, I was texting you. Yep. Have you heard of this Elizabeth Holmes girl and all this there knows shit that happened, you know, a couple of years ago and up until last year. And, um, I was, you know, yelling at TV, holy shit. Really? You know, cause it's just crazy the way what you find out and especially that you dive deeper even after the documentary into other videos and to the guy that broke the story and all this stuff we'll get into the, the, the way the things that happen in the background. So we're, we're not necessarily talking about a documentary or, you know, this particular story. We're going to use this as a vessel talking about narcissism essentially is what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just so much to this story. So the, the documentary is on HBO um, and it's called The Inventor, Out for Blood in Silicon Valley. So that's the HBO documentary. Mm-hmm. There's also a couple little ABC documentaries. I think there was an ABC podcast or something they did on this story when it broke. So this would be in, what, 2015, 2016, I believe. Right. So. Uh, in 2015, Forbes named her the youngest and wealthiest self-made yes. female billionaire in the United States. And Theranos at the time was valued at $9 billion. $9 billion. By 2016, Forbes revised her net worth <laughs> to, to zero. zero. <laughs> exactly. So, so in that time yeah, period. Yeah, it's pretty recent. Yes. You know, that all the that the actual shit hit the fan. Yes. A lot happened from the time she dropped out of Stanford at 19. That, we, that nobody knew about right. except for some internal people and then some people that had left and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, yeah, so this company was founded in 2003, so I was a year off, I think, when she was 19, like I said. They raised over ten, uh, $700 million from these investors, $700 million in that time period from venture capitalists, private investors, etc. And like you just said, it re- resulted in a, ten, a $9 billion evaluation um, at its peak. Mm-hmm. The story broke, um, and we'll get into all this kind of stuff. Uh, the story broke from the Wall Street Journal reporter, I think it's John Kerry, and he's now ha- has a book out as well about this whole thing. It's fairly new, uh, Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in Silicon Valley Startup. And uh, that's the book he wrote based off all this, and he was basically tipped off um, from a few people that were employees. Uh, it was almost like the Blob Lazar thing we talked about with, the, with the, a couple weeks ago. We were talking about how he was supposedly in Area 51 or S4, or whatever it was called, near Area 51, and he described everything as, you know, compartment mentalized so mm. nobody else knew what was going on and this is exactly the way they describe it here so you had this big lab company competing with lab and these other you know just one other big company that does the major testing medical testing in the u.s and this department over here doesn't really know what the other department's doing and the people on the regular what they call the carpet and the <laughs> i love that statement the guy said yeah uh, one of the guys was talking about there was the carpeted world and this tile world so the office people and shit didn't know what was going on in the labs and shit, and the lab people didn't know what was going on over here. And then I'm sure there was another lab because essentially what happened was this magic machine called the Edison that you're supposed to put this little cartridge of blood into that's got one or two drops was supposed to you know do over 200 and something odd blood tests. And essentially they they tried to build it. It was a it was a real thing. It was a real thing they were trying to accomplish. But very early on, people had questions about it, and uh, I think she was even told early on by one of her professors that she went back to for advice about it, right, before she started the company that was impossible or something like that. Uh, th- that and some other idea she had had before that was some weird bandage thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, it, it just became a shit show internally, but nobody really knew it at the time. All the while, the, in the public face, she was like growing superstar, she was put on the cover of Forbes magazine and Fortune and Inc. magazine and all these big business magazines attracted all this attention. And they called her the next Steve Jobs, which she was absolutely obsessed with, the, the Steve Jobs, turns out. So that was no coincidence. She wore black turtlenecks exactly like Steve Jobs. She, she, had the, she never had license plates because she leased a car every six months to avoid license plates. Security that was probably unnecessary. Um armed guards and bulletproof glass in her office. I mean, all this crazy shit, literally emulating everything Steve Jobs, even down to the photography. Oh, yeah. I mean, down to like the the, the iconic poses you'll see Steve Jobs in when he's doing like an iPhone reveal. Yeah. It was insane um, when you find out, you know, how this woman actually 
acted in private. Uh, let me uh, actually touch on the lady you were talking about that she went to and uh, kind of set up that that whole deal. Uh, early on, when she was at Stanford, um, you know, she she consider, she fancies herself uh, inventor and entrepreneur, and she likes to put the cart in front of the horse. She yes, yes. she likes uh, to come up with an idea and then build everything around it to make it work, basically. Um, so her idea on the on the bandage thing Chris was talking about was like a, it was like a patch you could wear that would monitor your blood levels and if you needed certain medicines it could inject it right into your skin and um she took that idea she said she was going to get a patent on it took the idea to uh Dr. Phyllis Gardner professor of medicine at Stanford and uh Dr. Gardner told her you know it wasn't it wasn't uh possible but uh cuz antibiotics don't work like that they don't and, work uh, in, in small doses like that she said uh I believe is what she said she said it was like talking to a wall, and uh, yeah. I could tell. You know, she just shut down, and she went to go find a second opinion. Well, um, she she dropped out of school, and I also think Chris that that is a lot to do with the Steve Jobs thing. You yes, know, you hear Steve Jobs dropped out of school. You hear Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg right. dropped out of school. Exactly. It's and it's the cl- it's a good story. It's, that's what I was saying about the story. It's a your, great story. To your narcissism point, you know, if you believe you're of that ilk, yes. Why not drop out? I don't need it. They didn't need it. So she drops out, and believe it or not, has a family friend who gives her her first million dollar check, and. She's off to the races. You know, a, a college dropout at 19, million dollars in her with, pocket. With only two semesters of, of actual chemistry. Yeah. So, and, and, and I like the point that that John guy said about that and his uh, bird's eye 10,000 foot view of why he thought it was fishy was that in other things, yeah, you can have an idea and get by with that, like in IT, for example. And of course, Bill Gates and, and those guys are mentioned. But this is medical training, that you need that formal training. I think that was an important yes, point. And she dropped out point. without any training, no PhD, and right. then had this idea about how to do blood stuff, and she had no technical training in it whatsoever. And, you know, my thought on that is you can you can run a company and you can not be a doctor and oh, hire sure. doctors to do yes. it. Yes. But you need to let those doctors be the ones talking to the public. Exactly, and and giving and when they're giving you feedback, listen. You have to. But she didn't. No, she, she basically couldn't take any criticism, and to, but basically wouldn't take no. Right. For an answer, this is you know possible uh, because this is Star Trek. Uh, so, so she <laughs> so she 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 kind of says she tells that story about her uncle uh, right. passing, and then she goes into the. I hate giving blood. Oh my God, it just ki- kills me, you know. Um, and and the the uh, documentary is real dramatic about showing a needle go in real slow right, and all this right. stuff. And and they make you know giving blood like this huge traumatic thing. And I'm sure it is for some people. So she said, um, so we're gonna you know take just pick prick your finger like a sugar test. Uh, you, yep. you see them all the time. Uh, get a few drops of blood. They go down into this little tiny. A tube, um, it's like a little cartridge. Little cartridge, yeah. They call it like a nano, nano yeah, tube or nano something. Nano tube or something, yep. And um, so then the cartridge then goes into this little box that slides into the door of the Edison Chris was talking about. And the Edison proceeds to take these minute amounts of blood and somehow, uh, you know, regenerate it, make more of it so they can test it multiple ways all at the same time. And um, all without supposedly diluting it, which is a no no in most tests. <laughs> and, you know, it's a great idea. And I yes. know because I've said on multiple of our podcasts and videos that I watch uh, forensic files. And I know there have been leaps and bounds in like the amounts of trace evidence needed get smaller and smaller. So, oh, yeah, so yeah. they can get these microscopic amounts of trace evidence 
and test it where they used to not be able to. Right, and you mentioned the DNA test kits now that are so Yeah, popular. this is another similar you know, you thing like that. You can just swab your mouth and yeah. know all your percentages of ancestry and whatever. So. so so the idea of using a small amount to test is possible, but in you know when they're doing those small amount tests on forensic files, they're testing one thing, trying to get DNA from something. Right. This thing is supposed to take that small amount and test 200 times for different things, different tests. Right, which are complex. And so, you got a bunch of moving parts and centrifuges yeah. in there with, you know, separating blood from you know, and all that stuff. So in theory, I thought it sounds fantastic. Yes. But people had questions almost immediately. It, it Right. And that's the thing. That's what sold uh, all these people because the, the amazing part of this story is – they, once they got in, yes, they started having questions, but with the initial idea, because it is a great idea, and we got to, that's the key word there, idea. She got people, I mean big cats, politicians, ex-politicians, ex-military, big-time cat, fat, fat cat investors. I'm talking about people like Henry Kissinger. I know. Former Secretary of State, another Secretary, Secretary of State, George Schultz. Yeah. Who most credit with ending the Cold War with Reagan? <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, former senators. She had uh, General Mattis, the Mad Dog, Dude. was on the board of directors, which was, of course, he was recently Secretary of Defense. I mean, th- just unbelievable. He is sh- sh- going back to the Steve Jobs and Apple thing. She was obsessed with Apple, right? Um, she uh, courted Apple's top guy i think it was the head of software he was avi yep. avi or avi uh tivanian i believe it is so he was there for a short period of time but he was one of the ones early on who once he got in and started asking questions then she turned on him and uh he he got out pretty fast actually right but she purposely recruited several apple employees including him the head of software at apple who had worked with directly with steve jobs and um the iphone product designer anna Ariola. right right and right. Yep. who asked a lot of questions too and was met with that same you know uh, yeah you can't you can't ask those questions you're uh you're not seeing the big picture or something right vague, i'm you're, sure you're either with us or against us yeah kind of thing. It, it, which, which starts getting into you know seeing the the you know her personality and the narcissist and all that and the things that are associated with that um anyway uh, the main whistleblowers in this documentary that kind of started the, as far as the documentary i mean there were a lot more employees that were later talked to from this reporter who did this whole investigation and wrote this book the main ones were, were tyler schultz who was actually the grandson of um, george schultz the secretary of state who was on the board and he was actually signed on he was so intrigued by the idea himself when he heard about it, he asked if he could be an intern. So that's how he started there. The other one was uh, a, another lab technician, um, uh, Erica Chong. And she was one of the lab techs doing the blood testing and started having these questions about, because initially you were getting these bad results, but they're trying to fix something, and that's normal when they're trying to fix something, sure. But then they started going live with patients, and they would just like, ignore the bad stuff and send the good data points and to and because what happened is essentially i don't know exactly the year 2015 2016 they struck a deal with walgreens yeah and i believe it got into 41 stores in that area uh palo Palo alto and all those areas in california where they opened up these uh theranos wellness wellness centers centers, uh within their wellness centers i guess yeah where you were supposed to go in there and start you know uh, you could go in there as a customer and get your finger pricked and get all these lab tests done. So it started with a trial run. And, you know, it was limited, of course, at first, because it wasn't all ready, apparently. But what people found was, and they ended up serving over a million people, by the way, over a million customers before this thing was even close to being ready, which it never was going to be ready. Right. But what they would find uh, when you go into the stories of the customers is they would go in there and say, I need this test, this test, this test, whatever. Like I said, it was like a menu. I mean, you know, which sounds great. You pick up, you know, pick these things off a menu. Your total's forty two ninety five. We'll call you in a couple of days, <laughs> you know, or whatever. Right. So they did this, but they found themselves with a regular intravenous needle in their arm and going, wait a minute, I thought this was just a finger prick. And they would say, no, for what you ordered, right. you have to have this one. But And the reason they were doing that is because for to fake it until they made it, which was, I think, her fantasy, 
Yep. They would just take the blood like anybody else and send it off to their own labs. But then their labs had bought these third-party machines from Siemens. Ain't that crazy? And they ran people's blood on those machines, not even their own technology. And, of course, that was kept secret for the longest time until the article came out that he originally wrote in the uh, Wall Street Journal, which was they're not even using their own technology to test your blood. That's what kick-started the, the firestorm in the media, started bringing, raising a lot of questions. And and that's also another funny point that the documentary makes. You know, you said that the uh, machine she was using was called the Edison. Yeah, and they, and yeah. they said he was notorious yes. for faking investors. He was um, when he was trying to like show them the light bulb, you and know, to keep it on. He yeah. had it working, but he it wouldn't it work, stay on. Right, it was the, the film kept you make burning it. out, and he kept finding these tricks to show them. That, oh, it's working fine. It's working fine. So they'd keep funneling money into right. it. So. That's that's really crazy uh, parallel there. It, it is interesting name to choose uh, yeah. from somebody so you know uh, so notorious for that type of thing. Um, so yeah, I mean we I, we we were worried about doing this podcast in a sense that we don't want to bore you with you know uh, the because you can go watch the documentary and see it all. But it's just the, I think that I think the thing boils down for me is. It almost when the cult topic came up, we were going to do talk about which we still may do. Oh yeah. yeah how, you know, how do people get into this type of thing and start believing it? But we were talking and, you know, she's, she's doing these, you know, um, meetings in her company and she's up on stage and the, and the limelight, Steve Jobs style. And if you're sitting there as an employee and you're just a lab tech, you don't know exactly what you're doing compared to the big picture. You know, there's some machine that's going to change the world. And it literally would change the world in the sense, cause they could put these in, um, third world countries they could put they were talking about on military helicopters in the field for combat right um you know all this type of uh, these real world applications and when you hear that you buy into it if if you're sitting there in a big building with your office and your computers and there's a logo on the wall yeah and all this stuff seems real you're all and, about it and you know that you go in every day and, and put your heart and soul into what your part of it exactly. is. Exactly. You assume everybody else is, <laughs> and when this all gets put together, that the higher ups are putting it together. Yeah, it's going to be perfect. Right. And, and your checks of- are coming in. Your family's living well. It looks like you're like you. You see that your CEO is on the cover of every big magazine and yeah, all over TV. And you want to be associated with her, and you're yeah. part of this big story. Almost growing. It's just it, it was trying to copy Apple. Like uh, really, she, she literally called it the iPod of the medical industry. Is what she yeah. referred to this as. It's and, how groundbreaking. So, I mean, you can see how the employees were caught up in it. And and what was the lady? And who, the investors who are not medical doctors. They're just rich, you know, uh, capital venturists. Yeah. And you hear this story and you see, yeah, we have, you know, so let's, I'm just making up numbers. Let's, we have, you know, 50 employees already and we're working on this device we call the Edison, blah, blah, blah. And this is what it's going to be, you know, these applications you're all in and you get one then you get the rest because that's how it's almost social proof you know okay hey i got henry kissinger yes oh he's in okay count me in i'm not saying he was first i'm just using no i know example. yeah but i think you that's name how drop a couple names that's and people right are like Whoa. you name you get one you get them all i think i think that's how that went down and <clears throat> these um with all this money coming in, they were spending it on marketing like crazy. These videos that they would put out that were like, um, what would you call it? Like um, uh, virtual tours of how the Edison works. Right. And uh, it made it look incredible. It made it look so real. And um, then they hired this Academy Award winning documentarian to um to film the Walgreens thing. Yes. And I mean everything I don't know. It just feels it felt so real and so many people bought into it. Right. And to add on to your point about the advertising, even for the website when they started putting up their website early on and the videos and you know the the advertising you're talking about, she even chose the same agency as Apple. See? She cho- which is I believe is called uh Chit or something, shit slash day. I'm, I'm not wow. sure exactly, um, but it was the same company Apple would use for some of its, you know, more iconic ads. So I mean, she literally copied Steve Jobs down to the T, or Apple, the company, uh, as far as like what she was trying to portray of what this was. Because when you go watch this documentary, that um, 
demo that I was telling you about, the automated looking demo, they show you that in the beginning and they basically sell you on it. So in the beginning, you're like, wow, this is awesome. Yeah. And yeah. then they start, you know, unraveling these loose, loose ends. And yeah. And, it, and, it, and, it. and you think it's just going to be a simple, okay, this was a thing. Ended up being a, a, a lie and it didn't work. She squandered the money and br they went but broke. When you find out about the, all the details and all the, the secrecy and the, you know, her being paranoid and um, it comes down to her being a, a, obviously an intelligent person but an absolute narcissist who you know who shows all the signs and symptoms and then people start picking up on it and i think once the questions started coming in from bigger people who were leaving and uh you know a few people dropped off the board and things like that and then especially when the thing broke in the paper people start talking they're talking internally and yes. all of a sudden they're they're because at first you're afraid you know like okay i don't Cause he like the 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 one guy who was uh, Schultz's grandson, he said that he would have all these questions, and then go talk to her or go to a meeting, and then almost believe it again. Yep. Because he wants to so you want to so bad that you're changing the world. Yeah. That all these questions, well, they're not really that. We'll, we'll figure it out or whatever. So in your own head, you're trying to rationalize that what she's saying is is, is the truth. Everybody has wished they were a part of Apple when it was at the yes. Genesis or Facebook or something and you watch the social network movies and you wish you were there in the beginning and and these people felt like they were a part of something like that. Yeah, I mean it's like when I when I first got on at Microsoft, the first thing I did one of the on the first day is I got on what was called Link at the time. Now it's called Skype for Business. Um but I was on the Link team, but I got on Link and looked up Bill Gates. And and he was, you know, cuz I can see I could technically chat with him. He wasn't online. Right. But I could technically just have a conversation with Bill Gates from my desk. And you get, and, it, and you know and you know that story, that's that famous Microsoft story. He yes. dropped off, he wrote base, dropped out of college. He wrote basic and you know, the world's changed and of course he stole a few things too, but the point being yeah. um the point yeah, Xerox would have been a different company if uh if they would have just not known, you know, thought in advance about what what they had in their hands called Windows oh, and man. a mouse by the way. Yeah. Um anyway, so the point being is you you feel like you want to be part of this legacy and I I so I have a little experience to know that feeling of what it would yeah. be like to get hired on there. Right. And then be a part of that no matter what your job function is, whether you're the, you know, just a secretary yes. um, cuz she even got she thought it was odd that she was part of her interview. And she was just the lady at the front desk. Yeah, lady at the front desk on her entrance interview, the CEO. The CEO. Busy-ass CEO of this company <laughs> right. interviewed her. Right. That's so crazy. That's, That's how much control she wanted to have. Exactly. Now, I was going to ask you that, um, is it Chung or uh, the lady... Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, she was obsessed with her. Erica, Erica. And, like, yeah. idolized her. And then... All of a sudden, she started seeing things that weren't yeah. right, and she started having questions because she knew because she was one of the people that wasn't just working on like the technology side. She was actually a lab technician working with the customer blood okay. that was coming in. So she knew that the results were wrong. Oh yeah, she yeah. knew the machine was not working. Uh, it would not. It would. It would be way off. And then they would send this stuff back, and and you know they would basically say, you know, and I'm not a scientist to be able to explain this right, but let's say there's these data points for this blood test result. They would just ignore the bad ones in here. Or there's three good ones, oh, but yeah, ignore yeah. the two or three bad ones and send those back to actual customers. Yeah. You know, that, I guess in this case went into Walgreens because there were some other deals on the table, but those companies actually started asking questions and backed out. Yeah. So they didn't mention a lot of those as far as the other companies, but Walgreens actually struck a deal. And another big part of the documentary was, and, and we did tell uh, you guys in another podcast that, hey, we might, you know, try to turn you guys onto some podcast, I mean, documentaries and stuff. Here you go. Um, <laughs> this is this is a case of that. But yes. The, uh, there's another big point in it where they were saying there was literally only one qualified um biologist or chemist or whatever yes. there well and, oh i know go ahead i know what you're going yeah. and this guy you know he liked to do everything scientifically you don't go by the seat of your pants you know you do there's there's scientific methods and he was coaching everybody and training everybody and they were learning so much but 
he kept trying to put the brakes on. He kept saying, we're not ready. We're not ready to do this, you know. And so she wasn't ready for that. So she she started leaving him out of the loop. And he started getting a bad feeling. Turns out she she fires him. And uh, he gets into a depression and basically drinks himself to death and commits suicide or something. Yeah, it was it and, was insane. And, and he was the only qualified guy there. And he was replaced. I believe this is correct. I know it was somebody was replaced by a dermatologist. Yeah, I think that was so. Him. That it was there yeah. were people coming in that were being replacing these big people she had got in that were actual experts. And when they would replace them, it'd be somebody that didn't have the same knowledge. I mean, wasn't even qualified for what you were doing. Right. You're talking about blood work for, you know, uh, disease testing for actual humans. <laughs> you know, it's not yeah. some uh, robot or some shit. Um, so it's absolutely and insane. And then when the engineers who were actually building the Edison would say, can it be bigger? I mean, come on, there's too much heat building up in here. and Too many moving parts. If we can yeah, the make centrifuge it a is bigger. splashing blood on the inside of the thing, and then yeah. the little droplet, the little uh, things that go down and suck the blood out and change it to put it to a different um, whatever. You know, then they're breaking and there's they're messy inside. I mean, just and she didn't want to hear it, and she didn't want to hear it. Just get it, just get it done. I guess just I don't get know. it done, or I can get somebody who can get it done. Right. Are you telling me you can't? Is that what you're saying? Yes, and and really put them on a the spot like that. So. Ah, she she needed some she needed some uh, help, and and you hear the stories and you watch the movie on Jobs. He seemed like he'd be hardest to oh, deal I'm with, no especially doubt. like on timelines. If you said we need more time, he'd be like, "I'll get somebody in here who can get it faster." So I'm sure she was copying him in that regard. Uh, I'm sure, and that exactly was going to be my next point about her obsession with Steve Jobs. It's, it's after he died in 2011 and the employees that come out are talking about, no, this is not directly in this documentary here, but if you look at some other ones, there's a, a few other documentaries that ABC did and a lot of individual videos on the story. Um, but she apparently began to borrow management styles from this book. Um, who wrote, I think, uh, Walter Isaacson wrote a best selling biography for, uh, about Steve jobs. Right. Um, of course being the CEO of Apple, and the employees were uh, said these they were interviewed by the guy at the Wall Street Journal, uh, Carriou, I believe his name is. Um, I'm probably mis mispronouncing that, but he's the guy who originally broke the story. Um, they were all reading this, the book too, and could pinpoint which chapter she was on based on which period of Jobs' career she was impersonating. That is, is that an actual not, quote. That's ridiculous. So that's what a quote from an employee that they the thing the conversations they were having. Yeah, you know, in the you know in the closet probably because they were so scared around there to talk <laughs> exactly because they found out they were being keystroked. Oh, um, now that's yeah, not abnormal yeah. to have security IT security in big companies. I mean, I've dealt with that myself in the banking industry because you have a lot of sensitive information. You can't have people leaking out credit card numbers and selling them. I mean, that's obvious. Right. But these people found out they were being keystroked because they would send an email privately to another employee, not about any, and mention something they had a question about, and then get a letter from a lawyer from the top end. Wow. And quoting exactly, you know, the number or whatever they had in their email. So they found out they were being keylogged. So it was insane. I mean, like I mentioned before, she had security uh, with her, bodyguards, no pl plates on her uh, cars, black cars, you know, like Steve Jobs did. Um, bulletproof glass in her office. Uh, people would catch her lying about small, unimportant things. Like she, I, I mentioned that one example to you. Um, he's He sent her an email about something, and she said, oh, I just left the office. And he's literally watching her down the hall in another side office right. through the glass, replying to him live. And then he walks in there and says, I thought you just left the office. And she gets pissed off and confronts him. Right. She you know, runs out of the office and is like, somehow, don't you ever walk out on me. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. So it, it starts to get into, so then when you start seeing all this stuff and you put all this together, or as far as the, the story, because it's a great story, it's just an intriguing story, you start looking up the narcissistic stuff about narcissists and how they behave and or sociopaths, whatever. And it's absolutely insane. And it starts to fit. It starts well, to fit with all the stuff that the employees are talking about now. I told Chris, I said, you know, the documentary clearly has, you know, multiple employees who said she was there all day, every day, would sleep in her office and, you know. Yeah, drink green juice. Yeah. That was eat, all she. Eat she, Chinese um, every day in her office and stuff. Uh, so she did put in the time. 
until I think this Sonny guy came around. Yeah, Sonny was the big, uh, I think he was the beginning of the end. I do too. Because people started to leave with some questions, but they just left privately. You know, they just put in their res- uh, letters of resignation and went, never went to the press or anything because they thought, you know, maybe she'll get it working. Exactly. That's what they said. Yeah. He comes in and ends up, he is uh, now named COO, and he is a big tycoon from other investments. So he's not, I don't know exactly what he's done other than invest in companies and get rich. But it ends up being that she's living, she moves in with him in an apartment and yeah. kept it secret. Yep. So she's sleeping with the COO, and they kept that secret, but they all, but people already knew, because you know how people... Oh, they, yeah. You know how people, people, people watch. They do. And they want to gossip at work, and you see that they come in at the same time, and they do this together, and they were seen out here together, and whatever. So they tried to keep that secret, but ended up being, yes, they were in a relationship. She finally admitted that. In a deposition just last year before right. her trial, which is coming up in August of 2020, um, and taking like private jets to different places together and things like that, right? It was clear, and and he is just another one of these older, rich white guys who were infatuated with this young lady, right? And she learned how to turn her charm on around them. Apparently, you know, I mean, uh, apparently she's a great storyteller, but she does it in the in in a deep voice that's not even hers, which we were going to bring up at some point. Yes, but I, I just it turns out that everything about her is fake, including her voice. And this yeah. is where I'd originally I told you, James, I'd seen videos pop up randomly in my feed for probably a year now about you know Elizabeth Holmes' fake voice, and I didn't know who she was, so I didn't right. associate it with this whole story. But she has this real, and she's done these TED Talks and all these, you know, interviews she's done because, again, she was on the cover of Fortune Magazine and Forbes and, you know, Inc. and Bloomberg Business and had all these interviews and stuff on TV in the spotlight all the time, rising star in Silicon Valley type thing. Absolutely. And she had this deep baritone voice, which most people said sounded unnatural for her. And, yes, some women can have deeper voices, and that's fine. Right. But this was odd sounding to most people according to them yeah uh speaking to her in person so you can go see all these clips for speaking and i was telling james uh something i'd saw on another video about the voice issue alone was that she speaks like really low and then pauses like this and only says a few words you know what i mean because what they were saying about the voice thing these these uh, experts were saying that if you keep talking in a long breath your voice naturally goes higher at the end of that breath. So she purposely broke up her words, and like, and so that accomplished, like you said, two things. It kept the baritone, but it also allowed her to say less in the amount of time she was allotted for whatever talk it was. So she yes. was, you know, and, and again, I'll go back to the, the quote I mentioned before we started. Even in the beginning of this thing, um, one of the writers in one of these magazines uh, that were, you know, asked her and interviewed, interviewed her about you know, what this product was, what it was going to do, how it was going to change the world, described it as comedically vague as far as how she's describing, you know, this machine that's going to work and change the world. Which is similar to the Bob Lazar thing. Very similar to the Bob Lazar vague stories. I don't really know that much. I wasn't only saw this and whatever. We were very compartmentalized, and so I didn't know what the other team was doing. They had no idea what we were doing, which is not how – Science gets done. You and know. when you are discussing something that's so cutting edge and the world is dying to hear about it, you can't be vague. Or no. you're going to stir the pot. Yeah, People are going you, to be, that was awfully vague. I need to do some, I need to dig into this. Right. You're going to have other scientists and people in this field going, okay, tell me exactly how you extract the uh, whatever exactly. from, you know, the red blood cells from here and do this with that and put it in this uh, chemical. You know, you're going to have the scientific stuff asked. And they, there were never answers. And so people started walking or questioning or leaving. And um, so shit started Indeed. happening internally. And then uh, once once um, this story broke with him and you started having a couple people who got you know ballsy enough to say something, then the shit hit the fan. The, the writer that you said broke the story, what was the paper again? Uh, the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal. Yeah. He says in this documentary that he wanted to see the, uh, Edison. Yes. And they said, we will take you down there and show you, but you cannot talk about what you saw. You have to sign an NDA. 
Yeah. Yeah. Anybody you literally was, can't describe what you saw down there. Right. And and employees so, couldn't even tell their families what like, they did. What the what is the point? I'm writing a story right. that's gonna give you publicity. You know, this fantastic machine you're telling the world about, you're gonna show it to me, but I can't Tell what my eyes just saw. I can't even describe it in my story even vaguely. Wow. Because, you know, and again, her comeback to that was that, well, you know, LabCorp and all these, and the other big one, I forgot the name of the other big, you know, blood testing company. Yeah. There's only really two from my understanding. And uh, LabCorp I've I've been to for various drug tests for work and stuff like right. that. Right. But um, they were so after this, which, you know, sounds good. It does. Because corporate, corporate <laughs> espionage is a real thing. It is. But you can't see this and uh, unless you sign an NDA, and anybody that's trying to report on it or whatever to give us publicity has to sign an NDA, which means you can never talk about it or write a book, by the way, <laughs> right. um, you know, uh, before you see this thing. And so they just said, no, I'm not. I'm not going to sign an NDA because I write about it. Like you just said, that's his job. Yeah. So he's trying to help and just get a couple answers because he got the first things he, you know, when people contacted him about it were just like, you know, vague little things that could have been simple, simply answered if she, if, if, if she would actually agree to an interview. And when they finally did, they finally agreed to one after begging for so long and all the lawyer, all the lawyers showed up and they had a big argument and they were all recording. Yep. They're all recording each other. And so he said, he pulled out his thing too and recorded it. And they just jumped on his ass for asking questions and basically said the same thing. We have all this, you know, this has got to be secret because somebody's going to steal it. So it, it, it just it would be like, do you have government contracts? And she would allude to it. They did, but never would come out and say that she did. Right. But she did tell other people like on the board that they had government contracts and these things are going to be installed in military helicopters, medevac stuff and all that was going to happen. Yeah. And, and investors and all that stuff. So, you know, if you hear, Oh, possibility of government contracts. Yes. Let me invest. Please. Absolutely. Because those are, Huge. Those get paid. Those get paid. <laughs> There's no. They're not late. Right. And they're, and they're way over budget. Government pays on time. <laughs> and they're way over budget. Oh yeah, way so, over budget. So that's uh, that's what. And uh, again, that goes back to getting these investors that you know just believed all this stuff. Is you get one, and the so, rest fall in line. And that's probably one of the big selling points is military. So let me ask you this: You and I have watched a lot of Shark Tank. Yes. All right. <laughs> yes. We have seen on Shark Tank. Some people who literally have sold just the idea. Yeah. And not have prototypes and stuff. Yep. Just the IP, basically. Yeah, you've seen a couple of times where they say, if I give you a million dollars right now for 100%, will you take it? Yes. Yep. And all it is Done. is an idea. And so she has a good idea. I want to give her that. She has a good idea in theory. Sure. All right. Yeah. But I think it's been tried. I, I think so. I think it's tried to, time to put that to bed. You know, and come up with another one. If she is truly an inventor, right, right, she should have shut this down the right way. Exactly. You know, apologize to the board of directors. So, so, what are your thoughts on that? Then I'm trying to set this up so I can ask you. Yeah. Um. Does she have a future? I mean, is there something with her? Because she is fascinating. It is, and that's what this goes into. Is it's not necessarily about. The, the device itself, the Edison and the company itself, is about her, her intentions. Yeah. And that's what, but before, really quickly, just to throw this out there for people who want to know, like, currently what's going on. In 2018, um, the SEC, which is the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, charged Theranos and her uh, with deceiving investors by massive fraud through false or exaggerated claims about the accuracy of her blood testing technology. In response to this, uh, they settled the charges by paying a five hundred thousand dollar fine. Oh wow! Returning the, her shares to the company and relinquishing her voting control of Theranos and being barred from serving as an officer or director of a public company for ten years. So that she thought that was the end of it. She was she could just kind of step back and she would let Homeboy take care of it. Sonny, I believe. Okay, his name yeah. Is. And pay a little fine, which is nothing to a $9 billion company. No. And I think at that point, it probably lost some value. But anyway. But the problem for her is, in 2018 of June, a federal grand jury indicted her on nine counts of wire fraud and two counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud for distributing blood tests with falsified results to consumers. 
She, she is going to trial and facing up to 20 years in prison and th- hundreds of thousand dollars in personal fines. Um, in 2020, her trial was 2020, uh, August, I believe, of 2020. And she just went to court last week for another thing, but there was a deposition you can see online. Anyway, so she's finally actually in trouble. Officially, the company is shut down. Its doors are closed. It's no longer business. Everybody's gone. And the reason all this happened to her was... I wanted to mention this just to kind of give her credit and make sure I'm clear on it, is one of the whistleblowers, Erica Chung, who was the lab tech, wrote a letter finally to CMS, the Center for, for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which alerted the FTC and all these other organizations, uh, government departments, and they investigated and they shut them down. Right. So she finally, you know, she this is the girl who looked up to her as, you know, a big female oh, yes. CEO and entrepreneur and all this stuff, and then she started having questions, and she would kind of tell herself something to make it better, and then this more questions came, and finally she she had enough and realized this was wrong, what they were doing, they were covering up things, literally sent, there was literally a woman who thought she had cancer again. That was one of the big examples. Right. She got this test from them at one of their Walgreens centers, and she came back with a something was, I don't know the exact test, but I know it was like 300 and something was the result which was 200-something points off the actual result when it was double-checked again for, by her doctor. Oh, man. So she thought she had a tumor growing again, essentially, somewhere. Oh, man. And it turned out to be false. So, she, you know, that was – imagine getting that news. Yes. Uh, just by going to Walgreens to get one of these magic Theranos tests. <laughs> so um, anyway, so back to, back to what you were saying, kind of starting to lead to is all this happened, and that, that's basically the overview of the documentary and kind of the overview of the company – but the question is, is did she actually ever have a good intention? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or did she, or that what she did. And then once she realized it wasn't going to work, obviously she continued and she continues to lie to this day and denies everything. You know, she pled not guilty. Right. Um, she continues with the voice on in court. She continues with the baritone voice. Right. Um, that's been proven by multiple sources inside the company, former college people, professors and students that she knew, as yeah. well as people inside the company that, you know, heard her, like, crack, you know, uh, kind of break guess, character. Break character. Uh, happened on some interviews. Obviously, you can hear them clearly on YouTube. You can see some of those videos. So the question is, is, um, is, it, is, it, is she a narcissist that had a genuine good idea and she thought she could do some good? The, I guess the difference is, is, is she's truly got the narcissistic disorder. She sees the world in a different way than me and you, you and I do. Right. You know, than normal people do. So did she have a good idea and think she could really get there, or did she? I, I think at some point though, she purposely started deceiving, fake it till you make it. And I thought she just could buy herself. I think she figured if she could buy herself a few more miles, a longer runway, that at some point it would magically get there. And, in this and fantasy, I could in this see that world. thinking. Yeah, I could. Right, because once that machine gets going so fast, it's kind of hard to to go. Okay. You know, maybe I overspoke a little bit, guys. Uh, right. I'm sorry. It's hard to do that. There's a, there's a lot of a level of pride there, and uh, you don't want to come off like a bullshitter. So you kind of, like you said, you hope the run you can increase the length of the runway a little right. bit. And, and I, I can see that happening. And I think she, and I think being a narcissist, she saw that if this was going, if there was a light at the end of the, of the tunnel. Uh, be damned with all the people to get hurt in on the way on the journey. Oh right, right. You know cause yeah. the, the 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 end justifies the means, and she was going to get there regardless of all the fake results she sent back to a yep. million people. By the suicide way, suicide by the guy, who suicide got fired. by the guy, all the shit that happened, and, and you know, people lost their jobs. Obviously, yep. um, that were probably paid very well. And uh, anyway, so do you think how much do you think her being a female played a role? in investors do you think a male with the same ideas could get that kind of backing i mean i mean for for the documentary some of the women say yeah that's true she kind of mesmerized these guys they they were infatuated with her almost yeah the college professors ladies were saying i never i called bullshit from the beginning yeah uh she never had this voice in my class I told her this was impossible, but she had all these damn old men fooled. They were mesmerized by her somehow. She doesn't blink, guys. No, she doesn't blink. 
at that all. That is like another weird Very thing. rarely. Yeah. I mean, at least in public. Right. It's like she put Botox in her eyelids or yeah, something. Yeah, and she's got these really deep blue eyes, and they're, they're big blue eyes, like really odd, like a deep blue. Very, very. And, I mean, I don't find her personally attractive, so I, I don't know. know if that has a thing to do with these older dudes, these old investors or something. I think That's she's really intelligent. Yep. Um, I and too. I think she had a great story, and she sold them because she learned how to sell them. Yes, Almost because like she a, kept repeating everything. But it kept working. Yeah, I think I think she actually studied how to manipulate people. Yeah, I really do. Uh, being a narcissist herself, so I don't think it necessarily has anything to do with the you know her being a female. Because I think a great idea is a great idea, right? Um, but it certainly helps with maybe some big old male investors or something. The, I, I kind of feel like that, and also you know, people. Once you reach a certain age, I think you want to latch on to these wonderkin type people who are just, they seem wise beyond their years. You think, you know, how cool would it have been to hang out with somebody, um, you know, like an Edison or whatever, you know, uh, I, well, the, the, the guy who has Tesla motors, um, What's his name? Oh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Yeah. He's a weird guy, peculiar he, guy. He is. A bunch of great ideas and money to throw at it. Oh, I'm going to build tunnels under L.A. and right. move traffic fast. We're going to Mars. And and, and let's start now. It, right. You know? Yeah, and why so, not? Uh, he kind of fakes it till he makes it a little bit, I believe. And, I do, too. And I, so, I think so. Uh, I feel like, you know, people are drawn to, you know, wanting to rub elbows with people like that who are these genius type characters. Because the word genius has been attached to her a lot in these um, articles and stuff. Right. So I don't know. I, I think, I guess what I'm getting at is if I invest in you, and that's really what I'm investing in is 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 not necessarily right. the brick and mortar and the the labs and all that stuff. I'm investing in you. You're investing in the idea and the person that can and carry if it out. You yeah, aren't what you appear to be. It's almost like buyer beware. Right. I mean, to me, I feel like that because hey, if I do hit, you stand to make a ass load of money. But right. sometimes things don't hit, so. As far as these investors, you know, being paid back, I don't know. I think Mark Cuban and some of these people from Shark Tank, like, you know, Mr. Wonderful would be like, hey, you got duped. You you fell for, a, you know, a, yeah. a quick little story. Because you didn't ask the questions. You didn't ask the right questions. Right. Because, I mean, like Cuban on Shark Tank, he'll call somebody for bullshit in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. In a don't heartbeat. Don't care if they're crying. He don't give a shit. He's going to ask the question and say, this, this, and this, and he's going to go into detail before he puts his money up where, you know, so where others, you know, you've seen like uh, maybe uh, Kevin, not Kevin, I'm sorry, that's Mr. Wonderful. Um, what's his name on the end? Robert. Robert, yeah. Robert gets the fewest deals, but the few he does do are always seem to be just feel-good ideas for fun because to him it's not anything. It's, You're right. It's, that's a good way to put it. It's $50,000 to him. He's a you know a millionaire, multimillionaire, yeah. probably close to a billionaire, and he can throw $50,000 at something. And if it grows, great. If it doesn't, great. But there's also this idea of something on this scale that it goes beyond the money and making profit. It, it changes the world, and you get attached to that. Mm -hmm. So that's very attractive, I think, to people, obviously. So I'm all about the damage she did to people, the public. Yes. I am all about that. But these investors who kind of should have been, you know, vetted her more and done her due diligence a little bit more before they threw these big seven-figure yes. checks at her, you know, eight, nine-figure checks sometimes. Um, I don't know. I feel like they – they this could be a life lesson for them. And sometimes right. those kind of guys – need need that yeah and i was going to say what i would what i would ask her um well you know of course i'm not there on the spot or whatever but you know in retrospect and hindsight which is 2020 mm -hmm. you know to, to be cliche here um you would ask her i think i would a question i would ask her was okay with this big idea that's going to change the world and save lives preventative medicine is huge and I, and i'm all for it would you do it if you didn't make a dime you know what I mean? That, that would be a good question. That would be a good interview question. Yeah. I mean, would you do it if you didn't make a dime? Because 
these people, because you know, a lot of people look down on this type of thing. These fat cat, you know, investors, they've worked their asses off and ran companies and became politicians, some of them in some cases. And and they're, yet they're looked down upon like evil, greedy people or something. But if they, would inv- they invested in this company trying to change the world, yeah, they wanted to make money off of it, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. But would if this would all worked, would they be heroes? Right. You know, I, it's so anyway, I'm not trying to get into the, the other side of, uh, of no, know, the, I, but I enjoy looking down these. Uh, yeah. Avenues. That's what kind of these it kind of psychological up this, part of it. because that's capitalism because it's, it's what it is. It's the beauty of it. And, and people, you know, talk about what they, what they're actually talking about is crony capitalism, not true capitalism, but it, this is why it's brought, it's helped more people in the world than any other system ever period, because these type of ideas are simply start as ideas. And you literally create wealth from that mm-hmm. idea. It's literally created. So if this would have been, you know, worked or whatever, or maybe someday it will, it's a, it's a life-changing thing. It literally changes the world like the iPhone or like whatever you want to, you know, compare it to. But uh, it, it goes into uh, what I find fascinating about it is I, I, th- I think, you know, she probably just lives in this, it's because it's the lines up with narcissism, this fantasy world regardless of her background not knowing anything about medicine and blood and how all this works and testing she just thought it could be done if enough time was put into it yeah and and then she had to again the fake it till you make it type thing and 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 all these people be damned that don't believe it can happen right so i wanted to really quick before we move on just name a couple things that goes into being a narcissist because you'll see it fit well, some of the things we described. Before you do, yeah, yeah. I want to ask uh, kind of on this investing yeah, uh, yeah. thread we got going right now. All right. You got two dudes pitching some sharks. Right. All right. Both of them, we have this scourge in society right now that's like um, childhood obesity, which right. leads to type 2 diabetes later on and all this stuff, right? Yep. Two guys are, are wanting to battle this and and eradicate it, right? Right. One guy goes in there with this pitch about, you know, invest in my company that's going to, you know, go out to all these schools and get in these kids' faces and teach them, you know, a way to change their lifestyle simply to avoid this, right? Right. Like healthy lifestyle choices in a fun way. It's going to cost this much to build this kind of team to attack it like we need to, right? Right. And this so, other guy pitches. So, so this is the the side of just going out and teaching, you know, get out, get off the phone, get outside, exercise. Along those lines, yes, right? He's got this right, great right. plan. He's, he's, right, he's going right. to Some okay. detailed plan, right? And then the other guy pitches, I'm going to beat it because – we're going to invent this pill that these kids, all they have to do is take, and then they wake up and they're lighter and all this stuff. I think the pill would get more donations. In today's world, yes. Than somebody who's like doing the no-nonsense. We know this will work. And yes. I, so I don't know where I'm going with that. I, I do, th- and I, I think it goes with this um, Edison machine. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, no. I, There's I, I, ways to get cheaper blood tests for people other than spending nine billion on a magic box. Right. Yeah. If her dream was actually to yes. get affordable, you there, know, there is. And that goes, that goes into the whole healthcare system, which is obviously a pretty hot topic right now in politics. But the reason shit's so expensive is, is ridiculous. And that can be changed without, um, you know, having the government pay for it and start rationing it out. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's, I think you're right, though. I think in t- in today's society, the pill idea is the easiest idea. It's the easiest route, right? And it sounds like because it literally sounds like magic, like ma- that's like this Edison box, like the Edison box. It was a magical machine, and uh, and, and, and it would get the most interest. That's more fascinating than the hard. It's reality more fascinating of- than the hard reality on the ground, where you have to eat b- better, you have to exercise, yeah, and get off your phone and stop Educate playing as many parents on how to do certain exactly. things. I mean, not let them have their their PlayStation raise their kids, right? Th- so- that's the hard way, but it works and it's healthy. 
The other way is easy, and you don't know the side effects or whatever. Yeah, it's way and, more glamorous to it, do it with it, this magic peel. Exactly. So and, that's that's one of the major things with society and the and the creation. The that's the downside to technology. So I, I believe that had a lot to do with it too. We want to be part of the magic box. Uh, yeah, we, we, you know, we want to be part of the adventure. Absolutely, I I think that's one hundred percent right, and I think that's that's kind of where we're trying to go with this podcast is getting into the thinking behind it and you know yeah. what what it says about society today and all this kind of stuff not necessarily the you know because anybody can go watch the documentary and have an opinion and be done in in two hours um because i think it's about what is a two-hour documentary it's about but we hours. always go deep into but we all, but we yeah. want to see where it leads us <laughs> yeah um but before we get off the technical stuff really quick um and then we can go wherever we want to go with it narcissists here's just a few things uh you know because you know once you see this you start looking up all right, how you know what a narcissist is, and um, we've all thrown around the term, but this makes you want to look deeper into these type of people because they think differently. Yes, and so they do. It, it is a mental thing. It's dis, I think disorder, um, but of course, this, it starts with what most people know: they're self-centered. It's all about the limelight. You know, in her case, she she really really tried to become the next Steve Jobs, literally in the sense of the limelight, the look. The, the the way she spoke, I mean, her reveals, everything, like her gestures, the deep voice was part of that as well. You have a sense of entitlement. Yes. So that's uh, kind of what we just talked about today with modern society. That fits, you know, that's... that's, that's I can drop out of school. I don't need I, that. I don't need to actually study what I'm going to build. Nope. I can just uh, go out and make other people do it, which that's is right. fine. I mean, I understand to a degree that's, like you said, you can have a great idea and hire the right people to do it. But you got to listen to feedback. You can't just be entitled to your opinion, and that and that passes as fact. Agree. You have to have the facts from the experts, and this especially, well, like we're talking about the medical field, you have um, a lack of empathy. So this goes into her management style. Somebody you're, that left. You're describing actually, her. You're right. Uh, somebody that left. Uh, what, was it was it the Ravi guy? I believe that left her two books on how to manage people. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Literally with his uh, his. His uh, letter of resignation, he left her two books on how to manage people because she was apparently not good at this. Um, so that seems to fit. Uh, manipulative and controlling. Oh, yes. That's obviously her. She controlled everything down, like we said, from the secretary at the front desk to yes. everything going on and who could access what and who, you know, key login and all that good stuff as far as the employees being so uh, scared of something leaking out or whatever which really was hiding the fact it didn't work. Um, needs admiration in the spotlight. So Definitely. that fits her to a T. I mean, down to the professional photographers and the magazine covers. And literally she went to get inducted into some Hall of Fame type thing at her former school the day that the story broke. Or she, she was going to have an interview about like rebutting this story. She goes off to Stanford to be inducted into the like uh I don't know some oh I could see, like you yeah. get an honorary degree or something yep so some kind of hall of fame there so that certainly fits that um she can't uh, and this is again another thing can't take feedback or quick to anger obviously that's been we've described that a, a few times I'm sure right you can't somebody says wait a minute how are you going to do this this can't work this way Yes, it can because I believe it can. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and fuck you, you're fired. By the way, uh, that sounds like her style. Uh, and then, last but not least, well, there's two more. Lives in a fantasy world, so she honestly believes this can be done, regardless of the experts' opinions. Yes, and facts, and you know, like scientific facts and stuff like that. Uh, so that certainly fits the story. And then the the little thing, or the big thing that you know people started noticing early. Lies about little unnecessary things. Oh, so yeah. like I mentioned that one example of you know I just left for work, left work early, left the office, and she's still sitting there in another cube, uh, another office right there where you can see her. So she you know, and people and a lot of other people in these other stories you can go see when you watch this caught her in a bunch of small lies that didn't matter, that just were just stupid shit that wouldn't even matter. Like the big lie here is the machine works, <laughs> you know, yes. or we're almost done or whatever. It's a year out. Um, but the little things that, that she got called on, um, obviously. So I just thought that would be yeah. interesting to throw that little list in there of things to look out for in a, in a narcissist because it fits her to a T and maybe re maybe know somebody like that. When you <laughs> read that, 
it made me think this about her. I believe she didn't care about the Edison. I believe uh, uh, that right. was her vehicle to get that spotlight and admir- admiration. I believe, I believe so, too. I think her real dream was to be on the covers of those magazines. I agree. And she said, which of my ideas is the best can, can one? Can I sell? Can I, to sell to get me to that point. Yes. Yeah, so she, you, so you to don't get this admiration. So you don't go for the skin patch thing that's supposed to like detect, you know, if you have an infection and administer some kind of antibiotics, on, you know, with a band aid. Right. You go for the world changing, you know, micro technology that's going to change everything where people can have affordable, you know, preventative health care. And as they were building this Edison, I mean, they came up with some amazing machines. Yeah. Along the way, they filed for several patents. She put her name on every one of them. Right. Like she was the inventor. Yes. Like she was the, she just had the initial idea. The actual and lab people were, were coming engineers. up with patent after patent that should be protected if one of these other companies started trying to do this too. They needed to, to put patents on some of this sure. stuff. And her name was at the top of every one of them. Right. Like she was the one sitting down there with this. Down there with him. With the, she was. <laughs> no, a, this is the way it needs to do. Yeah. Like she, she was the genius in the lab doing the engineering. Right. Dude. And no, I mean, so yeah, you put the patent under the cared. company, but she she's per- very narcissistic. Yeah. She, you put the patent. Sure. I mean, companies file patents, mm-hmm. but it was her, it was her name, not the company's. Right. So she tried to play this role. And so I think history that's all it was. would look back and go, wow, she was on 48 patents. This lady was amazing. Right, exactly. And the whole time she was a fraud. And to this day, uh, to this day, she still denies everything. She still says she's going to run and uh, start another company. Uh, even with this pending, you know, pending trial that we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know if she'll, I, I think she needs to go to prison. Yeah, I don't know if what actually happened, but uh, I'm sure they're building a hell of a case. I told you that I totally believe that she probably siphoned some money off, put it in some foreign bank accounts oh, or yeah. something. Yeah, I, I and no if doubt. she does time, she'll come out rich. I'm sure, and we will hear from her again, um, because the company was worth nine billion at one point. You said <laughs> you thought you heard that she might have been worth four billion, right? Um, clearly, you know they said she was the youngest self-made female millionaire in the United B- States. Billionaire. Billionaire, yeah, I mean, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. One billion. Yeah, one billion dollars. Um, so, yeah, so she she had the money. <laughs> both now, did, where is that? Both did the pinky thing. I'm we sorry. Did. I can't wait until we're, there's cameras in here. I know. But, yeah, the uh, there's no way she blew through all that, especially no, living, no. living off of Sonny. While she's banking her money. Right, exactly. And she lived with him while he was the COO and actually probably before that because they met in college or whatever. and uh, Or he met her at when she was in college because he was older. And, you know, I just looked up and, and, you know, tried to find a recent interview. And uh, Entertainment Tonight, I believe, or one of those, I think it was E.T., um, went, found her in a park with a new boyfriend living in an apartment somewhere where she lives. They found where she lives. Right. Walking a dog through a park, and she's not wearing black. She's wearing a regular T-shirt and sunglasses. And even her neighbors didn't know who she was until she spoke. So she still does the fake voice. Wow. And in court. And And in court, she's on there doing the fake voice. And when you see her deposition, you can look that up on YouTube. And the new boyfriend is closer to her age. And the new boyfriend is young and regular, yep, regular guy. And he is, oh, by the way, this is what I forgot to mention earlier to you. He is the heir to some empire. Oh, of course. Of course. Dude, she's going to live a cush life. She's going to do a little time, Martha Stewart style. Come out. Probably. Probably. Come out and have it made. They'll find her. $2 Two million dollars and give her six months in some cushy prison somewhere. Yep, and uh, you know whatever. So I, I mean, that's what I'm guessing. Especially if the judge is a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. She's gonna have it made. I'm tell- I don't know. That's what I didn't understand. Like, I mean, it's. I don't want to. I'm trying not. I'm not trying to be. I'm just want to bring this up because this lady brought it up. The professor. Yeah. She says that she has the she had all these men, you know, kind of in a trance, and she, I don't. That's why I kept. I don't see harping it. on it. I don't find her attractive. But if you're seventy or but you're that's right, ninety that's, some year old Henry Kissinger, that's what I was going to say. Uh, yes, then sure, young, blonde, 
chick and, yeah. and you know sure and she's gonna save the world you know and, and i'm gonna be a part of this and, and you I'll haven't throw, been a mover and shaker in quite a while yeah I, yeah yeah i'll give you a hundred million dollars it doesn't mm -hmm. matter to me um that's just a you know that's pocket change <laughs> you know so <laughs> yeah i mean uh, mm -hmm. it's just it's just a crazy story that i didn't think would be really that interesting and i got fascinated with it but it got into the core of not necessarily the you know exactly about the company itself you know theranos and what happened but just a the story of it and was she really ever did she ever really give a shit about changing the world or pretending to yeah the, you know you know did she, i mean but i think again you got we got to remember that not to give her any slack because these people know what they're doing so it's not like narcissists are like insane you know where they but they do view things differently as far as reality i'm counting on some of you guys i know we were uh, all, you know, Game of Thrones gang. So some of you guys definitely still have HBO. Yeah, right. Please go watch it. You know, give it a shot, and uh, I think I think you'll be fascinated with it. Because, like he said, both of us looked at the thumbnail, then read the synopsis, and we're like, eh. Bar yeah, barely yeah. decided to push play, and uh, I stayed up probably till five a.m. watching that thing. The night yeah, I did. yeah, and I, I, I did same thing. I said, like, well, I'll give it thirty, twenty, or thirty minutes, and then you know I'll change it to something else. And then, I, and then I think an hour in, I text you, yeah. "Have you seen this fucking thing on Elizabeth Holmes <laughs> so and Theranos?" So the documentary, if you do, and, 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 no, I mean, and this is not an ad. Obviously, we're not sponsored, but Lord no. Uh, but we're but not we getting that Theranos money. Exactly. Um, but yeah, the documentary is HBO. It's called The Inventor: Out for Blood in Silicon Valley. And I want to mention the whistleblower, uh, well, not the whistleblower, the, the guy who did the story in the Wall Street Journal, John, uh, I, I know I'm mispronouncing his name, Carry You, I believe. He wrote a book now called Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley Startup. I think I mentioned that before, but I want to mention it again because all the details that are not in that documentary are in that book. Um, like all the details about other employees coming forward and you know people in college that she knew that said, you know, she never spoke like that. Professors in college, people that he investigated went and talked to to verify all this as opposed to just getting one little source and, you know what I mean? He went through and did the work, you know what I mean, and put it all in this book. So there's a lot more detail, I'm sure, in that book, which I, I may I may get that book now, at least audio book version or something. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. Just out of curiosity, just to see what else is going on in the, as far as the details behind it. Yeah, we do a lot of following up with stuff we've watched year ago you know two years ago we'll always yeah know, go back and check well that's the way it was it that's the way it was you watch a documentary and then you want to get I, I try to be fair and get the other side of it or if there's a side to get you know what i mean uh, try to get every aspect or angle so you start looking up other little pieces on her and then you go and then it leads you to these little interviews from way back when it leads you to you know people coming out that went to college with her Right. These professors and all these others. So little things that's not necessarily mentioned in the documentary. And then you find out all this stuff. And then the voice thing was just, I thought for a minute, like I wasn't really sure if it really was her voice or not. Like are they, are they lying about the voice thing? I know. But then you go through and you see and hear it. You hear it first of all. And it, you hear how it's always kind of modulating. But then you hear clear examples of it. She speaks like a completely normal young woman. But she talks really low like this and spaces her words. And every other, you know, public interview and especially anything to do with the company. But then, like I said, he has other verified sources in his book that kind of say, no, no, she never spoke like that. This is all fake. Right. Remember Brett Butler, the female comedian uh, that had that TV show, had the deepest voice, man, deepest voice. It sounds like her. That, and, that when you said Brett, did you say Brett, Brett, Brett Butler. That reminded me of a baseball player. There or was a baseball player named Brett. That's Butler. why. There yep. you go. I knew. I heard. <laughs> sure was. As an old collector, I that's knew that sounded familiar. But and um, as far as documentaries go, we are we go across the board. We'll watch any documentary, pretty much. You know the three identical twins. That was fascinating. Yes, that was really the, cool. The one about the. Um, Munchausen syndrome with the little girl, the mom kept her sick yeah. and all that. Um, I mean, the one on Netflix about the you know, chronic illness we talked about, yeah. we mentioned that before. 
So, I, I mean, every night I sit down when I'm done, whatever I'm doing for the day, whether it's editing or writing like I did today or whatever, or streaming, I am looking for documentaries. And we're we're obsessed with Shark Tank. James mentioned that earlier. Yes. That's one of the only actual TV shows I watch on a regular basis when it's out. Um yes. You know, like season 10's over now or whatever. But I just love the idea of – you know, this, an idea becoming a real thing anyway. Mm -hmm. So I love that story. That's a great story in itself. And this kind of lined up with that. And then to find out it's all bullshit and how many real people it affected like a million. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> yeah. It's just insane. Um, but I want to say one thing real quick to you, James, that we, cause we had talked about a lot of conspiracies. We talked about the Bob Lazar thing. Yes. Um, this is why, I don't think there are real, I mean, I'm not saying they don't start. I'm saying this is why I believe I don't think any big-time conspiracy can ever last because there's too many people that want to talk, and when one person gets the guts to do it, the rest kind of start going, yep, 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 and they all start talking. Because you hear the examples of, we knew what book, what chapter she was on the Steve Jobs book because the way she was acting that week. Right. So that's what I was going to say is just as a bigger thing for conspiracies because this – She's literally could charge with a conspiracy, yeah. and like the, you, you, the Kennedy murder. Yeah, you, they they cannot they cannot because she thought in her head that she could control all these employees mm -hmm. just by intimidating them, yeah. so they would never say a word. And if you think that a piece of paper that you sign is going to stop somebody from talking at some point, you're crazy. Yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. So like, that like, was that was her. She tried to protect herself with all that bullshit. And with, with the Kennedy thing, you know, if there was this major government cover-up and all that stuff, you would think that there would be more than a handful of people who by now would have come out, or at least their kids would have come out and said, my dad told me this. And I know a few have, but you, you would if there was a gigantic secret – Oh, yeah. Thing. Or about the moon landing, if it was a hoax, you know. Right, yeah. A lot of people would come out and say. Yeah, and, and with the know. Kennedy thing, you know, you got this, the release documents now, and then you actually had the, the, you know, the Senate and their committee actually say it was conspiracy. So that didn't last, but they tried to make it last. But, you know, it, eventually it all comes out because people want to talk. People want and, to gossip. And when you experience something directly – and you got internal employees, like in this case, like going, what the fuck's going on, man? Yeah. And then you like maybe get the ball. You're so paranoid, but finally you say, hey, 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 Jim, <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you see what I'm seeing? And people do drink Kool-Aid. I mean, yeah. like in this documentary, the, the people were saying, uh, well, weren't y'all asking questions? And they were like, no, we were just happy to get excited about, you know, we'd go to these meetings and she'd get us all fired up. So they were drinking the Kool-Aid, and that Absolutely. goes back to, in the beginning, Chris mentioned cults and stuff. We've been watching a lot of different documentaries and different things that, you know, um, kind of touch the realm of cults. And right. so don't be surprised if we do pop off with a full podcast on cults and cult like oh, definitely, behavior definitely because i'm psychology i'm intrigued exactly that's what intrigues me the psychology because you think because you can sit here on you know on the couch and have a conversation and say i can never how, how could you ever be sucked into a cult right but there are there are real smart people yes indeed. that have that are logical people that can be that are involved in cults i mean you know we we see that current day tom cruise um i mean seriously my mind so, was on Scientology. Yeah, Scientology so is so the perfect example. So th there's there's something, there's ways to get people, and then you once you get a few people, especially big names like in this case, other people just like it's it's social proof. Yeah, it's all it's like when you go to YouTube, or if you go to Twitter, that check mark me means that you'll read their tweet before somebody else's. You're right. Have a check mark. You're so right. If that video uh, on YouTube has a check mark beside it and it has a million subscribers. You'll watch that video, even if it's exactly the same as a video that's got 300 subscribers or 100%. a channel. I so actually proof. look at things like that. Yes. I do. Absolutely. And um, I watched, uh, I forgot to tell you, I watched a whole documentary on Heaven's Gate, the people that oh, yeah. killed themselves yep. for the Halo Bop Comet. Yes. And yeah. And that see, goes you, way back before that. I mean, you wouldn't believe the history of the Heaven's Gate people. It's how those these families have been broken apart because 
they'll just leave their kids and everybody yeah. and go join this thing. It's crazy. I mean, so I would love to do it and talk about maybe even specific ones because I would love it. I mean, you're talking about you know Scientology and you know I've been you know I've watched many of uh, documentaries and podcasts on that and. Um, We've I talked th- about Jonestown and stuff I, yeah, like Jones that. Yeah, Jonestown. You just mentioned that one, Heaven's Gate. I mean, I was even thinking Mormonism to a degree. Yep. Um, so, I mean, it's really fascinating because we can all sit there and say, I never believed that some guy named Joseph Smith appeared in America, you know, Dude. and talked about in But somehow, smart people. A lot of smart people. Got pulled into this shit. And, and why? Uh, and why? And it'd be and cool how to dig that, into that. It's cool to dig in and find out how that happens to, you know, to people that are not, you know, low IQ or dumb or whatever you want to say. It's just intriguing to and me. So that's what really intrigued me about this story. People call CrossFit a cult. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> you know, I, have, I, I actually have. Veganism almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, things yeah. like that. I mean, these fringe things have cultish yes. type, you know, things, qualities yeah, but, about them. I mean, them. things that can be completely unnatural to, you know, being a human. And it's, you know, everybody else is wrong in the world. Yeah. So we're a part of something special. And I think that's a big problem with today's society is everybody's got to be in a fucking group. And this is what I don't get about politics now and people in general. Why is everybody going to put in a damn box? I don't get that at all. It makes no sense to me. Uh, yes. Who can be the, the you know this box over here? I'll become a part of this because somebody told me this other box of people hate me. And, and our parents told us, you know, uniqueness is a great quality. Exactly. You know, be so your own person. Everybody. So now from, in, you know, everybody being an individual, everybody's looked at upon in a group or some shit, which is insane to me. So anyway. So, yeah, be on the lookout. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's fascinating. And so I, we, I apologize. I, I, we, we're not sure exactly when we started. Like, do we talk about this just one documentary and just and I don't just want to rehash the whole thing because you can watch it yourself. I could I could have just post it on YouTube or, or or Facebook page or something like hey check out this documentary. But we want to go over like the basics of it at least to get to the psychology behind it. That was the idea. Yeah. And how people can buy into this type of thing because again, the idea sounds great. Oh, it does. But in when you in action, it's not real. <laughs> you know, it's not Star Trek. Uh, not yet, anyway. Not saying it can't. It's not possible. It's like the curtain getting pulled back on the Wizard of Oz. Right. You, um, know, you but, realize, wait a minute. You know, minute. it's like she tried to take uh, an analog technology with a basically a big black computer uh, it's tower, is what I'm trying yep. to say, like the tower, the box. Put a 3D printer inside Put of it. Put a 3D <laughs> printer inside of it. It's got the arms and the little <laughs> pulleys, and then add the blood shit to it with all these little moving parts. And it sounds like it could be done. That's and it. they got some done, yeah, you know, but they, they, they don't achieve some cool stuff. They said, but yeah, but as far as what their claims were, that's the difference. And then Way the continuation of the lie. And to this day, still acting like it was all for real. And we just made a few mistakes, you know, cause she said, you know, she could tell she was a little scared in that deposition oh, um, yeah. where she was like, uh, uh, I think she asked her, how many tests did you actually worked? And she's like, I don't know the exact number, but I think it was in the tens, <laughs> you know? And so, I mean, that's how that's vague, even, ba- even being vague in the fucking, and she knows all this shit, you know? So maybe she'll get a perjury charge too. <laughs> That'd be fine with me. But anyway. I'm looking forward to um, the things we, we come up with next. And, and and like I said earlier on, we, we've told you guys we will try to turn you on to some things. And you guys have turned us on to some things. Oh, yeah, yeah. In we the comments. Read all the comments, too, by yeah. the way. Yeah, that absolutely. one mentalist, somebody commented about, I watched probably 20 videos of his and forgot to tell you about it. You'll be amazed. Oh, yeah, You will yeah. be amazed. I'll show you some. What are we talking about? Uh, which one? Uh, when we when we did... Because um, we were talking about the one with... Uh, we did James Randy. James Randy, right. In the comments, somebody said, hey, check out some YouTube videos on this guy. He's a mentalist. He's a, he's unbelievable, and I did, and he is. We will watch those uh, yeah, yeah. after this. Yeah, that I'll, sounds that sounds good. So I love the way we we have a free flowing format here. I really do. Yeah, that's the, that's what I enjoy about it. This is by far my favorite format of, of things to do. So anyway, I, hopefully this didn't start out, start out too slow and, and people stuck around, but <laughs> because I didn't want to just go over and like recap the documentary and say, okay, what do you think about it? You know, I wanted to get to the psychology of, of this as far as like how does it happen how does these 
it's almost like a mass delusion thing. Yeah. And uh, we've mentioned that before. How does that start and what's the psychology behind it? And I, you know, we're just, we're just layman here. Right. Having the conversation, but I think we can get somewhere if we, well, we bounce know, off of our, our ideas. The last one I was in, in the title, you put um, something, something and therapy session. Well, yeah. those people had to stick around 40 minutes to get to the therapy session right. part, and they, evidently they did. So hopefully the way you title this and yeah, maybe whatever I don't you know. put, and uh, she's, we'll uh, get people to stick around. She's kind of back in the news fairly recently for up to a week ago because she had to appear in court or something. They established her court date for, I think again, I think it was um, October of 2020, I believe is what I said. So, you know, fairly recent, so we'll see, but... Anyway, uh, yeah, let us know what you think on the comments on YouTube. Uh, as usual, this podcast is available on all platforms. I'll try to go through them. Uh, SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, and Podbean. I got them all that time. You Look, did. I remember. You got it. My brain chemistry is changing back. I'm digging it. Uh, so No blood test necessary. No, I didn't get a test at Walgreens through Theranos for that. Um, but, yeah, leave us a, a rating on there if you don't mind if you listen on one of those platforms. And please, if you don't mind, if you do listen on those platforms, come subscribe to the YouTube channel. It would really help out a lot. Really appreciate it. And, uh, anyway, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what's up next. Um, feel free also to keep leaving us comments uh, in, in as far as, like, other for other Ask Us Anything style podcasts. Yes, always. Those lead to those fun. Time. Fun conversations. Yes, indeed. So always, you're always welcome to leave those, and we'll collect those over time and grab you know five or ten and do another one uh, when we don't have a particular you know documentary or some particular topic. So we'll keep doing those too. I love it. Anyway, uh, yeah, um, the the Riddick, uh, he's upside down here on the couch, the studio dog here, <laughs> I, and uh, we'll just let this fade fade out as usual. <laughs> I saw a, uh, a customer had a dog named Thanos the other day. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's many now. I thought now. that was the coolest name. I'm sure there's so – just like you know, Game of Thrones dogs. Oh, God. Uh, you know how many dogs are named Ghost and oh, Nymeria. I, oh, you know it. And <laughs> Grey Wind. <laughs> Ramsey. <laughs>